My name is Helen Easton, and I am head of the International Student Advisory Service, so we have got responsibility for our international students. And I'm going to talk to you today just a little bit about cultural and cultural awareness for students in the classroom. The first thing I want to ask is how many of the students in here are actually home students from the UK? Okay. So this talk is actually for you, because the international students know exactly what it feels like to be new in our country. They know exactly what it feels like to struggle with the language, our fabulous weather, the food that we have. <laughs> yeah. You're all laughing. All those things that make this journey for international students so much harder. And what they need more than anything else is to engage with home students in their classroom where they can get conversations about how are things going for you where they can have chats, where they can get an idea of what is normal, that I'm not the only person who feels this way, that I'm not the only person who doesn't understand. And they're getting it from you, as in home students. And you play quite a key role for international students. I'm hoping for lots of nods from international students, but when you say, what is it you want the most out of your experience? It's pretty far down the list when we get the words, a degree or my award, it is I want to make friends with British students, I want to get to know the culture that I'm in. Is this correct, international students? It is, isn't it? So what I'm going to talk to you about is some of the issues and dilemmas that international students face. So as you get a feel for who is in your classroom, because again, international students, it's not that you don't care about what's going on. It's not that you don't want to talk to whoever is in the classroom. It's just that it's really difficult to start and engage in those conversations. You might have had a rotten day with bad food, bad weather, and somebody saying something to you. All sorts of things that impact on the international journey. As head of ISAS, I am international students' greatest fan in this university. I admire the journey they have made, and it is because of that that I think it's really important that we look at what that journey involves for international students. So we are going to look a bit at what is culture? How does that impact on an international student? What challenges does that mean that they face? And I'm going to look at the three main challenges for international students. And then how you bridge the gap. What is your role in bridging a gap with these students? And then the benefits of an international experience. So what is culture? No surprise. Culture is how you know who you are, what it means to be Chinese, what it means to be British, what it means to be Irish. I know what it means for me as an Irish person. And it is very different from what it means to be an English person. So culture tells you how you know who you are. And it also tells you why you think the way you do about things. Different countries here have got different ways of looking at gender, different ways of looking at sexuality, different ways of looking at how we vote, different ways of looking at democracy. Who they are tells them how they think. It also tells you what is normal and acceptable. And the one thing, and I am looking to international students again, <laughs> that I can tell you is all those things that we think are normal and acceptable, a large amount of them can be very shocking to international students because they aren't in their own cultures. So don't take it for granted that what you believe, what you know is the norm. It also tells you what is right and what is wrong, and it tells you how to behave. Not every culture on the planet is like the British culture. Please, thank you, get into a queue. Not everyone's like that. I spent New Year in 2000 in Paris, <laughs> queuing for a loo, being the only person in Paris who was actually queuing, because everybody else was piling into the front of the queue, because it wasn't their culture, but it was mine. It also tells you what is acceptable behavior. So the way you behave in a certain way, if you're able to express anger or not, may not be acceptable with somebody else. And it helps you make sense of what is happening around you on a day-to-day -day basis. And I go back to the presentation that I listened to just before I came in and heard about all those wonderful pressures you're all going to face during this postgraduate um, work. And I realized that for international students, it's one more pressure that you're going to have to take on board, one more thing that you're going to have to juggle on a day-to-day -day basis and try and make sense of as you go along. Some of the negatives, and international students can tell me if this is the case. International students tell me frequently that all the universities that I have worked on, I had a student from Belfast um, who was walking along a pavement. By the time she got to her classroom, she was very upset, burst into tears in her classroom. 
And when she'd come to meet me, her shame was that she had cried in front of her classmates. And when I talked to her and found out what her day had been like, it transpired that just before she went into her classroom, somebody had stopped a car, window went down, and they spat on her outside, a outside the window and called her a racist name. And she was ashamed because she had cried. <laughs> I was extremely ashamed that I came from a culture that could do that. So racial discrimination happens in the UK to UK students, but it happens to our own students, international students, especially if you are struggling to speak English and people get frustrated with you. Language problems, one of the biggest issues for international students. They're taught how to study academically, but living and talking socially is a different thing altogether. Accommodation difficulties. Most cultures, including UK culture, students go to study, but in the UK and in some other universities around the world, home students or domestic students want to enjoy their first year. And they want to enjoy a bit of partying, a bit of what goes on, and that can be a bit noisy. So that can cause difficulties when I look at the great big list you have of all the things you need to do. One of those includes getting very good sleep, and that can be quite difficult if there's noise going on around you. Separation reactions are very, very difficult for international students because they're away from... They're linguistically deaf. You've got spoken English all day, yeah? Wherever you go. The news, newspapers, shops, whoever you talk to, it's in English. So at the end of the day, your head hurts. In English, does it not? And it does. So there's this anxiety and separation from what is normal that creates pressures and upset and can make things feel like they're just a bit too much. Our food... Most international students tell me that they don't really like British food. Would that be a rough idea? of? Um, our food is fatter, more fat content. It tends to involve a ping when the microwave goes off at the end of it because it's all cooked very, very quickly. Um, and if you come from a culture where you're used to, one, your mother cooking, or two, you go out and you buy fresh food and you chop it and you cook it and you eat it together as a social activity, that can be quite a shock in the United Kingdom where food isn't so much a social thing, it's a quick fix thing, as much fat into our bodies as we can get and that keeps us going to the next meal. Financial stresses for international students, make no doubt about it. If we have students from Syria, Libya, Iran, any of those countries where they have got huge conflicts at the moment, they will be facing financial difficulties. Regardless of how much money is in their bank account in their home country, it can't get into the United Kingdom. So there are all sorts of financial stresses that international students can face. And then one that is quite interesting, that you can be in a classroom like this and still feel very lonely. Loneliness is a big issue for international students if you're not talking to people on a daily basis, if you're not engaging. And one of these comments about culture shock is about how much it's increased for international students by an inability or a difficulty in making friends. And when I say make friends, and international students can tell me if this is true, international students don't want to be your best friend ever, do you? You don't want to live with these people every day. You don't want to go everywhere with them. But you want to be comfortable to be able to talk about your studies and what's happening around you. And that's what we mean about engaging as friends. Positives. <laughs> Three of them. <laughs> There actually are more than those, but I thought, let's just keep it focused. What are the positives of um, being in a situation like this where you have lots of internationals? One of the best ones is tolerance, where you do learn about others, and you do learn to challenge how you think and feel about other customs, and that should work both ways, that you should be able to eventually start out from one position and hopefully move to another, which is a more positive one. Better language and communication skills, that's always a positive. Better English. And also a change in understanding, which is the ability to see things from a different perspective. And that's what you have to do in your studies. You have to look at the issues that you're researching and see them from all angles. And that's what culture does as well. You have to see the people that you study with, that you live with, from different angles. So some of the positives in all of this are that you learn how to be a better human being, that you learn how to live with other people in harmony, if you will, or in a state where you can talk and discuss and debate rather than being at conflict. For international students, there are three key challenges, and I want international students to tell me if this is wrong, but first one is English language. Most of our students who come through from different countries are taught how to, how to research, how to study, everything from an academic perspective. 
But if an international student walks into a classroom and you're all crowded around in a group talking about the X factor, that won't mean too much if they haven't been here for a long time because that's a cultural link. That links us into who the first slide said, who we are and who we know who we are. We know all about the X factor. We know who's in it. We know what we want to happen, but you might not. So you can't talk about that. You're not even going to try it because you're going to feel stupid talking about it. So it's thinking about the language for day-to-day -day interactions. And that's why talking to inter international students, talking to each other, allows you to engage at a very different level where you can start to get into the social aspect of who we are in this country and understand better why we say and do the things we do. So how to change that? The interaction, meeting, talking and getting to know UK students. International students, is that easy? Oh, they've all gone silent. Is it easy to meet and talk to, inter to, to home students? Oh, yes. Who said a yes? Hands up, somebody who just said a yes. Oh, excellent. What makes it easy? Some tips for others. Well, you have, you, you, um, you have something different from others, so they'll really be interested in where you come from. And you have so much to tell them that they don't know from where you are. And then you can ask them, what about you? What's coming with you? And then they can tell you about them. So you're a stranger, and, and they're a stranger to you. So you can both share what was different. And, and that's why it's easy. OK. Home students, would you agree with that? Do you want to know about your internationals? Yeah? We might test you on that <laughs> in a couple of minutes. But that's absolutely spot on because those are the things that make you realise actually this person is actually quite the same as me. They miss their family, they miss their food, they might miss brothers and sisters, best friends, they miss having decent weather for more than one day. <laughs> Everything that they miss you can actually associate with that too because that's what it's like when we go away and we miss things so actually we are quite the same in that way but it is talking to the individual and hearing them say that that makes the difference did somebody say no it wasn't easy <laughs> oh don't change your mind now did somebody say no it could be quite difficult so you're all happy and it's going to be easy then too <laughs> okay that's fine i can live with that english language big issue Big issue. The one tip is shouting loud in English slowly doesn't make it any more understandable. Do think about what you're saying. An example I've been given at inductions recently has been an international student who was talking to somebody from the Guild and, and they were talking about what they needed to do for a particular trip. And at the end of it, the person said, the student said, that's great. Anything else? And they said, no, it's cool. And the international student said, so I need a coat because they thought cool meant cold. So cool does mean cold, but it means, as my son tells me, <laughs> cool means hey, it's okay. But don't think that you can't say that's really good, that, that's really cool, that's really good. Explain it if you have to explain it. international students. If you don't understand what's been said, I recommend you double check because it might not be something you want to say out loud again. But do check. If you say I don't know what that means, so do ask. All a learning curve, all a sharing curve. <laughs> the academic transition probably should have gone up first, but I wanted to buffer it a bit, really. Um, that is the hardest thing international students will do. And I, again, listened in to what the talk was before I came, and it's talking about commitment, getting organised, all those things. But academic transition for international students can be so difficult. Home students, find out from your internationals what it was like when they studied at home, because here we use, you've heard the phrase, autonomous learners. And that means that your tutors aren't there for you all the time. It means that you do have to get organised. You have to go and do the research. You have to make the best use of your time, valuable time. And you have to do it on your own. <coughs> but for lots of international students, that can be very, very difficult. And some research I've done in this looks at what it is it says about international students and adapting. So international students, this is where you have to not be afraid to say to a home student, am I doing this the right way? <laughs> I'm not sure, what do you think? And feed from them, ask them for information. But it can be a huge challenge and it can make you feel like you're not succeeding. Social adaptation and adjustment. <laughs> That's quite hard too. I talk to lots of students, particular Chinese students, and I will say to them about when we're talking about what's called ghettoization. 
And the university, is, like any university, is very keen not to have a ghettoization of its international students. And that means that you want to have them blended and merged and not off in their own groups. And when I talk to Chinese students and say, so how come at the end of the day you go back to a house that is rented by Chinese students? And they will say, because I don't have to listen to English anymore. We can speak Mandarin, Cantonese, whatever. We can cook food that we like. And I can just relax with somebody who's in my culture. So the social adaptation adjustment can be really, really hard for international students. I would never suggest that we say, oh no, don't live with other students from your own country, because I think that's a step too far. I think that's too much to expect anybody. But again, it is through those friendships, through that contact that you can have on a daily basis in your classroom. Because it could mean that one night, instead of going home and speaking your own dialect and cooking your own food, that you go out and do something with a home student and explore the region or explore different types of food. But that is a very big issue as well for international students. So English language, academic transition, and their social adaptation and adjustment. Home students, what can you do? <laughs> this is what I think you should do. Speak to international students. International students are not going to be offended if you say, tell me what it is like to live in Beijing. Tell me what it is like to live in in Mumbai or some of these cities. Tell me about your country. This is what we read on the news. Is it true? Is your country as dangerous as everybody says it is? All those things, all those stereotypical comments that come through our press. Ask about the col their culture. Ask about what is different to the way that they learn. What they miss the most about the home country. What is the most difficult thing about living in the UK? <laughs> Ask just for one thing, because you could be there all day if you ask for what is. They could give you lots and lots and lots of lists. Ask what they like about living in the UK, and you should be all there, you know, all day with that as well. So just one of those. What is it that we do that confuses you? Find out what we do that confuses them. Why not? They don't have to adapt to us fully. They're visitors. So find out what do we do that really confuses you. Cues, probably. Bus stops, things like that. Learn to value their experience. They're seeing you in a way that nobody else does. So learn to value that, what their perception is. Share yours, if you can. Tell them what your experience of education is like. You might be surprised to find that a lot of British students, home students, struggle just the same as internationals do. But you might not think it because they're home. And help. Give advice, give support. Nothing wrong with saying, do you know what? If I were you, I wouldn't do it that way. I'd do it this way. How about doing this? Just engage and ask questions. <coughs> Benefits of an, an international environment. And these are some of the things that they say. International students, it is the most incredible journey to decide to come to another country for a long period of time in a different alphabet, a different time zone, a different food, different everything, and study. We don't do that. We move an hour away from home or two hours from home. It brings self-confidence, the ability to mix and talk to other people. None of you have any idea where you're going to be working in the future. And wouldn't it be great skills to bring an employer that you have that confidence that comes from mixing with people of different gender, different culture? Independence and maturity. A global network. You don't know where your research is going to take you. You might be very, very grateful for your networks in the future. Also, an appreciation of your own culture. Make you realise what is good about your own culture. See it differently. Value it and appreciate it. And an appreciation of other people's cultures. The fact that not all Nigerians are the same. Not all Americans are the same. Not all French are the same. That people are different. A better understanding, really. A clarity of why you believe what you believe. You just believe it, don't you, at the moment? But if an international student asks you why, then you have to start thinking, well, actually, why do I believe that? Knowing your strengths and weaknesses. International students certainly know them. They know the challenges of being away from home. And learning how to creatively solve problems. And that is something that international students do. They creatively work their way through, on a day-to-day -day basis, the different problems that they come across living and, and studying in the UK. Final word. When most of you will graduate, which would be... In a year's time, so I should still be here too. Um, in a year's time, when you graduate, it's highly likely that when you get to the top of the steps in the Great Hall, just before you go and pick up your certificate, that you will find me standing there. Because I do this at some of the receptions, I think Catherine does them too, where you are the person who ticks everybody's name off and up you go. And the greatest tragedy for me would be for you to go past me having gotten your master's qualification, your postgraduate qualification, 
but having learnt nothing about other cultures, having learnt nothing about difference and diversity, and not having got to know somebody who is different in your classroom. So those, I believe, are my parting words to you. Yes? Does anybody have any questions for me or anything they would like to add to what I've just said? Or are you all happy with that? Is this going to be the friendliest cohort ever? <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>